So now that we have a pretty good idea about some of the benefits and features that the Linux operating system will provide for us, let's take some time to discuss what it takes to perform a Linux installation. But before we can actually get into the nuts and bolts of doing the installation, we have to do a little bit of planning first. We basically want to establish a couple of different things. First of all, we're going to talk about our pre-installation process, which is going to be establishing what the operating system is going to do for us, what different packages we might want to install, and various things like that. In addition, we we'll want to make sure we understand what our hardware requirements are. And this is mainly going to depend on what you use the operating system for. Another major confusion with the Linux operating system is how we're going to partition the hard drive or create sections of the hard drive that are functional for us in how we use the Linux operating system. And finally, for people that are just moving into the Linux environment, it's often beneficial to dual boot that or have Linux installed on the same machine as Windows, which will allow us to choose which operating system we want to work with. So understanding all of these and primarily what you're going to use the Linux operating system for will definitely make for a better, more structured installation. So moving along, the first couple of things we want to do for our pre-installation process is establish what we're going to use the computer for. So we definitely want to determine a functional role. Are we going to use it for day-to-day -day working in a corporate environment? In a situation like that, we want to make sure we have email, internet. We want to make sure that we have word processing capabilities. So all of those decisions that we make are going to determine what packages or software will be installed in any additional hardware configuration that might be required. Now, one of the things that you might take for granted when installing Linux operating system is what a lot of Windows users take for granted, and that is, I know my hardware is going to work, and if not, I can probably just grab a driver disk that came with my computer. That's not necessarily going to be the case with the Linux installation. To ensure that you're able to obtain the proper device drivers, you definitely want to take a detailed hardware inventory before you begin the installation. The last thing that you want to find out is halfway through the installation, one of your components is not supported by that distribution. You also want to be familiar with the amount of RAM and hard drive space that's going to be allocated to the Linux installation. Linux, just like every other operating system, likes to have plenty of RAM and plenty of disk space to move around in. So be aware of your particular distribution and what its requirements are. In addition, be familiar with the type of processor that you're using. Some Linux distributions don't play well with some of the newer mobile processors because they fluctuate on their processing speed or clock cycles. So make sure that you're working in a compatible manner between your distribution and the type of processor that you might have. You should also be very familiar with the hardware resource settings. These are going to apply for various peripheral devices and core devices that will be needed for your operating system to function. The test or the LPI exam is definitely going to require that you be familiar with the various resource settings. And this information is actually pretty easy to obtain. And if you have an existing Linux installation, it's pretty easy to find out what resources are in use. If not, you can most likely find these settings on the internet. For example, these are our interrupt settings. For the most part, you'll have interrupts from 0 to 15, with 0 being the most important and usually the primary timer or clock of the operating system. Now we might also want to take a look at the I.O. or input-output ports. These are hexadecimal numbers that are assigned to peripheral devices to allow them to communicate with the processor. And finally, another important one is going to be your direct memory access, or your DMA channels. Now, Linux is not a real utilizer of DMA to the same level that Windows is, but you should definitely be familiar with the default settings for 
direct memory access in the Linux environment. So another decision that we're going to have to make during this process is going to be whether we're going to be dual booting. And we'll talk more about some of the dual boot capabilities later in our lessons. Finally, we want to make sure that we understand the overall installation process, which is something we're going to cover a little bit later. We want to make sure we're familiar with our partitioning process and plan it appropriately so that we know how we're going to create that partition structure. Now, one of the problems I've run into in the past is downloading an ISO image, burning it to CD, getting all ready and set to install the operating system, and let's say that this particular Linux distro has five disks to it. Well, if I take the time to check those disks and make sure that they were written properly and are working, I won't be disappointed when I get to disk 5 and the installation fails because it's not good media. So from wherever you're going to be installing your operating system from, make sure that it's a reliable source. And finally, if you're performing an upgrade or replacing your existing operating system, be sure to back up any vital information before you do that. Because when you install Linux, most of the time, you're going to blow away everything on that system.